Hi, welcome to Muzzle First. Today I want to talk about one of the uh, most recent firearms I've picked up. Um, this is something that's made by kel -Tec. It's a real popular firearm for them. Um, and a couple years ago, we used to be able to see these everywhere. And I always meant to buy one, I just never did. Um, it's a kel PF9. Um, it's been a really good seller for them. Um, like I said, a couple years ago, these were available everywhere. Um, every firearm store I went into, you could see you could see them. They were available. Then they just kind of dried up. And I happened to be at a friend of mine's um, who is a who has an FFL, and he had one. And he was uh, looking to, get, to sell it. It was the last one he had in his inventory. So I bought it. Um, and I bought it for the price that I would have paid a couple years ago. So I was really impressed with that. So I thought I'd go over the specs of this. I'd give you a look at it, let you look at it. And um, we compare it to a couple other guns that I carry on a daily basis and uh, see what it looks like. All right. So the MSRP on this is uh, 356, uh, somewhere around there. And um, let's see here. So this is what comes in the box. You get your owner's manual. Um, pretty good manual, actually. It's got a detailed breakdown of all the parts. Um, I've paid more for firearms got less of a manual than that all right so of course you get the firearm comes with this you get a, a, a base plate for your magazine um, with a little thumb tab um, I don't generally use those I prefer the ma magazine to be flat all right then you got your trigger lock that comes with it um, I don't generally use those either all right let's go over the firearm itself all right, this is the kel PF9. Um, you can uh, get the, spe the specifics off of kel website, but I thought I'd, we'd go over them real quick. It is 9mm. The uh, magazine is a 7 plus 1 capacity. Its weight is 12.7 ounces unloaded. A uh, loaded magazine adds another 3 ounces, 2.8 ounces, somewhere in there. Um, it is 5.85 inches long. That would be uh, the length here, from in the barrel to the back of the gun. Uh, 4.3 inches high and 0.88 inches wide. And that is the impressive part. This is probably the most narrow 9mm that you can really get. And that's why I've always wanted one. Um, and I, this might be my last opportunity to buy one brand new locally, so I bought it. The barrel is a 3.1 inch barrel. It's got a five pound, approximately five pound trigger pull. And we can confirm here that it is unloaded. Um, trigger actually, it's very long. But uh, it's really not that bad at the trigger. No more, no more worse than some of the other um, double action only firearms that I carry. It's a rather long trigger. All right, so right about there. And a reset. It's got that first notch. And then a second notch all the way out. So that's pretty much all the way out to, to reset it. Once again, not that bad, but, you know, there are better triggers out there. But that's, like I said, that's not why I bought this. All right. So the advantages of it, small. Um, I actually will pocket carry this, and, um, and I'll show you, let's compare it to a couple other firearms out here. All right, so this is, this is what I carry most days. This is a, a Springfield XDS in 45. All right, so if we compare this size, all right, so we're looking at a firearm in nine millimeter that is a little slimmer, just a little slimmer than the XDS and about the same dimensions, just a little short of a barrel. All right, the XDS nine is roughly these same dimensions. I think it's just a, just a smidgen more narrow, but still this uh, PF nine is slimmer than the XDS in nine. All right, and another cool advantage, it actually does fit my pocket holster for the XDS. 
and we're able to get a full grip on it and draw it. So that was a huge, that's a huge plus right there. I don't have to uh, go get another magazine or another holster for it. All right, so let's compare it to another one. Something else I carry, um, Smith & Wesson 642. All right, this is loaded, so we're not going to do a whole lot with this. But if you look at the dimensions here, from the butt of the gun, if I butt the uh, grips up, it's actually shorter. All right, so let's move the grips up back a little bit to where the barrel is even. And you can see the back of the slide is roughly as long as... 642 is from the front of the, the the muzzle to the back of the grip the back strap so this is very comparable although it is much slimmer than a 642 all right fantastic guns by the way if you don't have one all right so next one i'm going to compare it to ruger lcp So the Ruger LCP is undoubtedly a very small handgun. Um, Alright, so let's see if we can line that sucker up here. Alright, so compared to the Ruger LCP, can I throw them out of the way? Of course, this is 380. The LC9 is uh, slightly larger than this, considerably larger. The LC9 is roughly the same dimensions. Well, I think it's just a tad bigger. Alright. So these are the three firearms that I carry normally on a daily basis. I'm going to add this one into the rotation. Alright. So let's uh, let's just take it apart. And um, I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. Alright. Uh, it's really simple. You can actually disassemble it with a magazine in it. Um, you're going to need the magazine out to put it back together. So... Um, it's probably just about as easy to take the magazine out now. Either way, it will come apart with the magazine in it. Alright, I use a little screwdriver to pull this apart. All right, so it is just one pin. Um, they say you're supposed to be able to use your fingernail for it. Um, it doesn't really work for me, but... Alright. There we go. It does have two springs. That is a plastic guide rod. Plastic guide rod doesn't really bother me that much. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how durable it is. And then you have the barrel. And this little slot right here is where the pin goes. That's what's the problem putting it back together. So we just gotta line that slide up and I'll show you that here in a minute. Alright, if you want to look at the inside of the slide. really pretty simple it does have uh, full length rails which is good it is an all polymer frame um, there are metal components in here but the rails in that are a uh, polymer they're not uh, they're not a steel rail all right so the, but you also look at a gun that's not meant to be a, it's not a range gun it's not something you're going to take to the range with thousands of rounds through it all right, let's just put it back together. And there's one trick to putting these back together, and I'll show you that here in a second. Goal here is just to not to lose the springs. Because if you drop them, they go everywhere. All right, so we got the barrel in place, we got the springs in place, we got the guide rod in place. All we got to do now is just mate the uh, slide up. On the frame rails, we're going to lock it back, and then you got to make sure this barrel lines up. Yeah, it didn't line up for me. That barrel has to go all the way forward for this to work right. There we go. All right, so you notice in there the uh, hole is clear. There we go. See, a hole is clear. Push the pin through it, if we can. There we go. 
and you gotta you know see it's not quite all the way in there see how it's it's flush it has to go underneath the slide and you'll notice a little uh, snap when it goes into place there we go it should look just like that function check is fine all there is to it I will uh, take this to the range I'm gonna take it back apart I'm gonna clean it I'll take it to the range and uh, I'll let you know what I think uh, please uh, like the video and subscribe and uh, let me know any thoughts always answer any questions if you're got a question thank you bye